Standard objects are also created in another context, using the fetch object method in MySQLi. Open the address model and navigate to the load function stub. We're going to add a connection to the database. Connect to the database. Then, write the query to retrieve a row from the address table by the primary key, address underscore ID. For safety, I'm using quotations around the identifier and casting the identifier as an integer. SQL query equals select everything from address from address where address ID equals int address ID. The result equals MySQLi query SQL query. Use the MySQLi result object to fetch an object from the database. If row equals result fetch underscore object display the row, then exit, var dump row exit. Save, then open the demo script. Remove the test object code, then add a title section for testing loading, followed by a call to the static method load in the address class. There is one test row in the address table, so explicitly load using the first row. Echo, h2, loading from database. Address underscore db equals address load one. Then debug the address db variable. Save, then switch to the browser and reload. The object returned from the database is a standard object. MySQLi can also populate objects if you pass the object name as a parameter. But as there is potentially data for multiple classes in this one table, you will not be able to use that. Instead, switch MySQLi's fetch to an associative array. Fetch, associ. Next, define a public static helper method to get an instance of a particular class, depending on the address type ID, and able to populate with an array of data. This method is public, as it's very useful to be able to dynamically create objects without having to know their class names. Start beneath the load method. Final public static function get instance, which starts with an address type ID and takes data, which is an array. Add documentation, given an address type ID, return an instance of that subclass. Pram int address type ID, pram array data, and then return address, and then we'll add a note that it'll be the subclass. As all the address classes start with the word address, start the class name with the address. Then, using the static property containing the array of address types, Get the name of the type of address. Class name equals address, followed by self, valid address types, address type ID. You can use the new keyword with a variable name. Just follow it with parentheses containing the data for the constructor. Return new class name, and we'll pass it data. Now that you have a mechanism to return a class of any address type, return to the load method. Instead of dumping the contents and exiting, call the getInstance method. Remember, you can't use this in a static context. Return self get instance row address type ID followed by the whole row itself. Before testing this out, a small change needs to be made to the constructor. When it was initially written, it supported the protected properties time created and time updated. 
Since that point, additional protected properties were added, but the constructor did not account for them as there were no records coming from the database yet. Go to the constructor, and then add two new lines, address ID and address type ID. These will be prepended with an underscore for the protected properties. Save, then go to your browser and refresh the page. The loader and helper functions have chosen the correct class for the row. In the next video, I will demonstrate how to intentionally create and respond to object-oriented errors in PHP.